After the shock of the Indian Mutiny in 1857, the British reinforced their imperial armies by recruiting another group of Indians as soldiers. And are you and your men ready? These warriors came from the Punjab in northern India. Most of them were Sikhs. And the Punjab is in the northwestern frontier of, of the Indian subcontinent. And if you look at history, uh, most of the military invasions over land would come from that part. So they live in a kind of environment that was often uh, violent and there were always wars. And that, as, as a result, that basically uh, uh, predisposed them, I guess, to uh, military activities. The Sikhs soon became the backbone of Singapore's police force. They played a vital role safeguarding the port and its warehouses. The port uh, development was uh, gaining pace. So basically, uh, when the East India Company was sort of uh, running this place, uh, they wanted to make sure that uh, they can extract the maximum out of uh, the trade of this place. And for that to happen, they make, had to make sure that there was law and order. So they wanted to build a, a very competent uh, military or police force. And so they, they got the Sikhs. And learning from India, as I said, they got the Sikhs and they got the people whom they believe could do that. Many Sikhs joined the British colonial army that was stationed in India and Singapore. The many thousands who gave their lives defending the empire are remembered here at the Karanji War Memorial. The British used the Sikhs everywhere. Wherever the British fought, you can bet your last dollar, a Sikh also fought with them. And uh, they were basically cannon fodder. There were no Sikh, great Sikh generals overseas, but they were great Sikh soldiers. Feared, fear, fearless, and yet very loyal, and uh, prepared to die. The book at Brown Cemetery reveals another remarkable fact about these Sikh warriors and how other communities in Singapore valued their services. These statues represent jagas, or watchmen. They still stand guard outside Chinese tombs. They fascinate Ishwinder Singh, who is a third generation Sikh Singaporean. Okay, so here we have a, we, we have a Sikh statue. And um, these, well, um, this pair is actually one of my uh, personal favorites. Sikhs became somewhat a symbol of um, wealth because only the wealthy Chinese could afford their own personal bodyguards. They must have seen them performing their duties in real life. And they felt that, you know what, perhaps these guys are doing such a good job in real life. I might as well bring them into my, uh, my gravesite to um, look after me in the afterlife as well. But Sikhs would also prove themselves as businessmen, doctors, and lawyers, thanks to parents who sacrificed everything for their children. They spend all their life pumping petrol, uneducated or minimum educated, and they live in the petrol station. They produce a family of lawyers who are some of the top lawyers in Singapore today. Huh? Parents, uneducated, kids grew up in a petrol station and they all became lawyers. And you can find a story like this in almost every Sikh home. That generation, I won't say that same thing is happening this generation, but that generation is what accounted for the rise of the professional class. As the colonial economy flourished, the British needed to improve their rickety civil service. As in the past, they looked to India to find the most promising recruits. In Ceylon, modern Sri Lanka, they turned to an educated class of Tamil speakers. Since 1830, the British had supported a first-class education system in the colonial capital, 
Jaffna. 